Well, here we are, finally back on the river after COVID-19. It's a bit late in the year for a springer. Um, and in case you're wondering, a springer is a fish that's been out of the sea and back to spawn several times and they can get quite big. Um, but anyway, the water after a bit of rain is a bit coloured. Um, and this stretch of water here isn't suitable for fly fishing anyway. It's an even depth, it's got a nice flat, even flow, but it does have some features which could attract fish to hold up in. So uh, what we need to do is to try and find those. Um, and there is a way of doing that, and I'll be explaining that to you shortly. Okay, so here we are, back on the River Wine. The river's a bit coloured. It's summertime. The fresh fish coming in, they finally managed to get through the shallows near Monmouth. We've had some rain recently and the river's up a bit, but it is coloured, so we're going to be spinning again. Quick uh, run through on the gear we're using, nine and a half foot hardy spinning rod. We've got a Shimano Stratic C5000 reel. I've now loaded this with uh, 45 pound braking strain braid. Some people prefer to use mono. Uh, with braid you get good contact with the spinners, the lures, and you can see the uh, feel the bottom, uh, you can see what's going on and there's less drag in the water. However, it doesn't stretch. Some people prefer to use uh, mono line because you get a bit more stretch and that takes that irons out some of the knocks and bumps when you cook the fish. If you're using braid, you still, I prefer to have three foot to a meter of nylon. This is uh, 20 pound breaking strain, and that is to prevent damage to the fish. That is connected to the braid with a swivel, um, various sizes of swivel. The better, the stronger, the better. Okay, rod, reel. The lures we'll be using today, the good old flying sea, single hooked, barbless. Uh, we then got mets. This is a big mets, single hook again with the, um, the split ring so we can change the hook if we blunt it or we want to go down the hook size. But the size of mets today will be going down to slight, slightly smaller mets today. Um, this is a number one Monday, whatever that means. So, rod, reel, lures, not a problem. Um, while we're on the subject of, of kit and equipment, um, I'll be wearing waders today simply because I like to get in the river with the fish. Greys, just over 100 quid, uh, don't have to go expensive. The boots are Holtzman, American. The reason I like the boots, these boots, because they're wider, they tend to be wider than, than some of the other manufacturers. And if it's cold water and you want to put a thick pair of socks on, brilliant. Um, otherwise, you know, you can be uncomfortable. You don't want to be uncomfortable. Other things you need to carry with you while you're fishing. Decent pair of scissors, especially for cutting braid. Forceps for getting the hooks out of fish. And if absolutely necessary, um, find those pliers for getting hooks out of fish as well. But also, breaking off and blunting the barbs on the hooks. That's enough about that. Um, so let's get this all put together and do some fishing. Okay, so let's go. I've chosen this bit of water simply because there's good light reflection and you're going to be able to see where I'm casting, hopefully. What we're looking for is features in the river beside the river and on the river that might provide shelter for a fish somewhere where it's going to hang out now the most obvious one on this stretch is hard to the right hand side we've got a big tree that grows right down into the river now i've just cast upstream at about a three o'clock position you can just see the, the rings on the water and i'm bringing the lure back just fast enough to keep the blade of the spinner moving but as close to the bottom as possible and i will bring the lure back behind that tree to see if there's anything tucked in there now the next cast is going to be at about two o'clock which is towards that big tree on the far side and 
and again I will be retrieving the lure just fast enough to keep the blade spinning. That's as slowly as you possibly can without it stop spinning and snagging on the bottom. If it snags on the bottom, clear the hook, recast and bring it in again. But this time, the same speed of retrieve, of winding the handle, but keep the rod tip at about two feet higher off the river, off the water. That will lift it about a foot off the riverbed. The next cast is going to be to about one o'clock, which will be uh, over towards the far bank. And then we keep coming round to a 12 o'clock cast, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock. As we're casting downstream, we don't have to retrieve quite so quickly because the river's doing half the work for us. Now, that is a cast to about two o'clock. Watch the retrieve. I know there's a weed bed in the middle that can hide fish. So, I'll be raising the rod tip to bring the lure over the top any moment now. There we are, just a slight lift. And now into the deeper water, we row lower the rod tip to bring the lure in nice and deep. Right, okay, the next cast is gonna be across to about 12 o'clock. And this time the retrieve will be slightly slower because the river's doing some of the work for us. There we are, that's a one o'clock cast. And you'll notice that the retrieve of the reel is just that little bit slower, a little bit slower. Here we are, we're coming over that weed bit again. This all takes time to learn, but um, if you're fishing earlier in the year, you don't have to worry about these weed beds. Anyway, we keep doing that until we're round 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and then we move down the bank, um, maybe three, three meters, 10 feet, until, and then we do it all again. Now, here, just to prove that there are river in the fi uh, fish in the river, look to the hard right, and you will see a fish jump. Eddie, there it is. Right on the right, and I thought I'd hooked it, but no. What I'd actually caught was uh, the stick branch or log or whatever it was that it was hiding next to. I shifted that, it spooked the fish, the fish swam off. Now, hoping that it hasn't gone far, we cast back upstream and we bring the lure back in nice and slow and deep to see if we can hook the fish. But, it doesn't be this time, but sometimes it can be. Back to the last time. While we're on the subject of kitten equipment, um, you don't have to be a member of the CIA to wear a, a fishing jacket. Lots of pockets, don't have to spend a fortune either. Keep looking in charity shops. They often turn up in charity shops. Got this one for 20 quid, brand new with tags. Lots of pockets, very useful. If, however, you are wading and you are going to be quite serious about this, especially in fly fishing, um, it is worth investing in one of these. Especially if you consider your life to be worth more than about 150 to 200 quid. This does up nice and securely and it's got loads of pockets. If you don't want all the pockets you can actually detach some of these if they're too bulky. But more importantly it has this which is the emergency pull cord in the event of you going in the river instead of on the river and you're going to go under especially wearing waders which could fill with water and drown you pull the cord it inflates into a, a, a life vest and it will keep you up and it will probably save your life very useful bit of kit however i tend to put a little toggle inside that pocket i know where the string is i'm sure i can pull that when i'm panicking but it can't go off accidentally. You can get these with the remote submersible um, triggering mechanism. They have been known to go off when it's raining heavily. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Um, other than that, don't forget, always carry a big net. Wait one moment, I'll show you mine. Now, you might think this is a little excessive. However, I can assure you that there are fish in this river that won't even fit in that. They'll be sort of lying spoon shapes. This is something like 32, 30, 
32 inches that way and 36 inches or something that way. And even so, it's a knotless mesh. And in the handle, it has a spring-loaded, I'll turn a bit closer, spring-loaded weighing scales. Clever, though, isn't it? Yeah. Well, sounds good. But unless you've got someone else to read it, trying to hold a salmon up in one of these things and read the weight, mm, not easy. But the feature's there if you need it. Okay? Got a simple sling. Chuck it over like that. Now, the only problem with carrying this is that should you go in the river and pull your emergency cord, <laughs> you're in danger of throttling yourself. So, bear that in mind, safety. Also, when we're talking about safety, you'll notice that most fishermen carry sunglasses. This isn't just so you can see the fish that you're not catching, it also is for eye protection, especially when fly fishing. Because your eyesight is worth preserving with a pair of sunglasses. These, £21. Don't bother spending any more than that because you're more than likely going to break them or drop them in the river and they're going to float off down to the sea. Just a little thing. Okay? Anyway, let's go fishing. I apologise if that all seemed a little bit rushed, but it gives you a general idea. The only way to learn properly is to get out there on the river. And if you do come down to Herefordshire and you want to go fishing on the Y, contact the Y Salmon Association, send them an email, give them a phone call. There are plenty of people in the valley who are quite happy to take you along and show you the basics, the rudimentary way of doing things. Um, they're not going to charge you. Yes, there are some proper qualified uh, instructors and ghillies out there, which they can really get you onto a fish. But if you just want a, sort of a fishing buddy to uh, get you introduced to the river and to get you started, give us a call. We'll see what we can do to sort you out. Anyway, tight lights. See you again soon.